a votary of truth. Centenary Celebration of Maharaja College During the Centenary Celebration of Maharaja College in 1951, Professor V. Raghavendra Rao was responsible for the wrong installation of the Dharma Wheel Stone on the Ashoka Pillar in front of Maharaja College. This pillar was inaugurated by Raja Pramukh, His Highness Sri Jai Chamarajendra Wadiya. In the Dharma wheel stone, one saw the cow, horse, lion and camel pushing the Dharma wheel from the opposite directions. In fact, the Dharma wheel cannot move at all. Sri Kanta Shastri raised a valid objection and demanded the replacement of the circular stone on the Ashoka pillar with the correct depiction of the Dharma wheel. Even today, the displaced and defective Dharma stone still lies in the Maharaja College quadrangle. During the centenary of the history department, S. Shrikanti Shastri displayed the tantric charts drawn by him and also his clippings from Illustrated London News on latest archaeological excavation. When Maharaja Sri Jai Chamarajendra Wadiyar visited the exhibition. Sri Kanta Shastri explained the tantric charts to him. Maharaja was very much impressed with these charts. He wanted them to be sent to the palace and he wanted Sri Kanta Shastri to visit the palace for further discussion. But Sri Kanta Shastri knew they would be lost there forever and hence declined to go there. Professor K. Nilakanta Shastri Episode Maharaja Sri Jaichama Rajendra Vadiyar decided to establish a chair in Indology in University of Mysore in 1951. There were many contenders for this chair and hence political intrigues began. Professor M. V. Gopalaswamy, the then principal of Maharaja College, thought Dr. S. Srikanta Shastri was the most suitable person to head the Indology department. Professor M. V. Gopalaswamy requested Dr. S. Srikanta Shastri to prepare the syllabus and course material for the Indology course. Sri Kanta Shastri prepared an exhaustive syllabus which was finally approved by the Academic Council of the Mysore University. He was appointed as head of the Department of Indology on a temporary basis. Students like Mysore Veena Vidwan, Vishveshwaran and others joined the newly formed department. Sri Kanta Shastri framed the timetable and teaching work in Indology department which was in addition to his regular teaching duties in the history department. An Indology association was formed and to raise funds for it a film benefit show was organized at Chamundeshwari Thakke's Mysore. They screened an Italian film depicting the story of the famous musician Niccolo Pagnini. Unfortunately, the income from the benefit show equaled the expenditure and it did not help matters. 
Professor H. S. Raghavendra Char can boast for the post of the head of the department with the big wigs and he was made professor and head of the department of Indology. He recommended to the University of Mysore to pay rupees 25 to guest lecturers who visited the department to teach students. Yes, Shrikanta Shastri resigned from the post of the head of the department of Indology and excused himself from additional teaching work, thereby saying he had enough on his hands. University of Mysore decided to invite Professor K. Nilakanta Shastri from the Madras University to head the department of Indology on a princely salary of rupees 1000 a month. K. Nilakanta Shastri wanted to be the director of archaeology department of Mysore State and also head of the department of history too. Dr. S. Chikanta Shastri resisted the takeover of history department. Professor K. A. Nilakanta Shastri completely revamped the syllabus of Indology course and dropped all references to Carnatic classical music that was made in the syllabus. In his opinion, Carnatic classical music had no place in cultural studies of India. The editor of Deccan Herald sent Professor K. Nilakanda Shastri's book, History of South India, for a book review to S. Srikanta Shastri. He wrote a scathing, vitriolic, and devastating review under the title of A Muddled History of South India in Deccan Herald. This book review can be found on page number 387, volume 2 of Sri Kantayana. It created a sensation in intellectual circles as it exposed the inaccuracies, the inconsistencies and defects in the book of Nilakanta Shastri. Some secret admirer of Professor K. Nilakanta Shastri wrote an article against this review of Shrikanta Shastri to the Bangalore Post, defending the book. A furious K. Nilakanta Shastri went to Deedhan Vice Chancellor V. L. Disauza and complained against the unsparing book review by a colleague. We all know Dr. S. Shrikanta Shastri suffered from poor eyesight, deafness and a few other medical complaints like hypertension. The conspirators backing K.A. Nilakanta Shastri hatched a plan to get Shrikanta Shastri dismissed from the service of University of Mysore on medical grounds. One day he received a notice from the registrar of the University of Mysore asking him to undergo a medical examination at care hospital. He was sent to various departments in the hospital like ear, nose and throat, ophthalmology and general medicine. The senior doctors were extremely shocked by the unpleasant development in the university. In the end, they gave him a medically fit certificate, enabling him to continue his services till 1960. So, the plan of the conspirators failed. While departing from Mysore because he was transferred back to Madras University, Professor K. N. Nilakanta Shastri commented in railway station to students and colleagues that if K. A. Nilakanta Shastri and Dr. S. Srikanta Shastri were put in two pans of a balance, S. Srikanta Shastri weighed more than himself in scholarship. This was a generous compliment from K. A. Nilakanta Shastri, the well-known historian of South Indian history. Dr. S. Srikanta Shastri's love for archaeology Ashrikant Shastri had a great interest in archaeology. 
he not only followed excavation projects in other parts of the world through academic journals but also maintained a scrapbook containing photo essays from the illustrated London news he also wrote the first kannada book on archaeology titled puratatva shodhane which was a textbook for ba students his first love was archaeology and when k nilakanta shastri left mysore the post of the director fell vacant during his stay professor k nilakanta shastri made a pretense of some excavation work by digging a few sites at talakad and however his contribution to the field of archaeology in mysore state was minimal after his departure dr rashikant shastri applied for the post another contemporary and a student of rashikant shastri m sheshadri who had returned from london armed with a diploma in archaeology also applied for this post shrikant shastri met the then education minister of mysore state shri ag ramachandra rao at lake view guest house mysore to plead for his case he felt he could do a good job in the field of archaeology if appointed as a director however his contribution to the field of archaeology in the form of research articles in epigraphia indica the indian antiquary and the book puratatva shodhane were all ignored by the education minister the other contender to the post M Sheshadri was appointed as the director for this post in fact mr m sheshadri was director of department of archaeology for more than a decade and no important excavation works took place in the mysore state m sheshadri was also appointed as professor and head of the department of indology in maharaja college musings of s shrikanta shastri at the time of retirement in the words of dr s shrikant shastri within quotes at long last i became the professor and head of the department of history by then Professor M B Gopala Swami had retired from the university and soon died in Bangalore. Professor C D Nasimaya became the principal of the Maharaja College. Professor K V Puttappa became the vice chancellor after Professor Manjunath retired. By that time most of my friends and colleagues were either retired or dead. My retirement took place on 12th November 1960 at the age of 55. I had altogether spent 32 years as a staff member of Maharaja College and spent nearly 40 years as a student and teacher in the college. Professor Nikam was my classmate and he happened to be the vice chancellor of the university at the time of my retirement he has placed on record the appreciation of my services to the university of mysore from the diary of shrikant shastri a few months before retirement yes shrikant shastri suffered a severe paralytic stroke which affected the left half of the body He spent 3 months in care hospital and gradually recovered his speech. His physical movements were not normal. He dragged his left foot and reflexes in the left hand were slow. 
He became a full-fledged professor of history only during the last six months of his service. After recovering from the debilitating stroke, he was offered a postdoctoral research fellowship by the University Grants Commission, New Delhi, to continue his research work. He decided to write Sources of Karnataka History, Volume 2 and Volume 3, with the help of a research assistant by name P. N. Narsimurti. The manuscript of this work is unavailable now. His son, Professor S. Nagana, searched for it in the university library as well as in the UGC library at New Delhi and made inquiries with several families in Mysore who were connected with S. Shastri, but he could not trace the missing manuscripts. All his efforts were in vain. Radio talks of S. Shrikanta Shastri. S. Shrikanta Shastri was a good friend of Dr. M. V. Gopalaswamy, Professor of Psychology and Principal of Maharaja College. Dr. M. V. Gopalaswamy had brought with him a small radio transmitter, 30 watts Philips transmitter from England. According to reliable sources, the word Akashavani was suggested by Professor Ralapalli Ananta Krishna Sharma and it was adopted by Dr. M. V. Gopalaswamy for his nascent radio station. He began broadcasting on 10th September 1935. The unlicensed radio station began to broadcast talks and music. Dr. S. Srikanta Shastri must have given a few lectures through this transmitter. We know for sure that the four Mysore brothers R. Chandrasekharaya, R. Sitaram, R. Satyanarayan and R. Vishweshwaran performed on this radio station. In 1935, Divan Mirza Ismail commissioned a radio station at Mysore with the name of Akashavani. In 1955, the radio station was shut down in Mysore and it was shifted to Bangalore. Here is a list of lectures delivered by Dr. Estrikanti Shastri over All India Radio, Bangalore, Mysore and Darwad stations. Number 1. Fortifications on 21st October 1954 in English. Kallanas Rajatarangini in English, 13 December 1954. Somanathapura in English, 18th October 1954. Number 4. Kadambas in English, on 13th March 1955. 5. Vedic Message of Peace in English. 6. Architecture of Harappa in English. 7. Belur Chanakeshwa in Kannada and also in English. 8. Harshavardhana in Kannada 1950. 9. On Sringeri in Kannada, May 1952. 10. Takshila in Kannada on May 1952. Bharatiya Nagarikate in Kannada on 12th September 1957 from Darwad All India Radio Station. 12. Gatastapane during Dasara from All India Radio Stations in 1953. 13. Hoysalara Kodige in Kannada on 19th February 1964. 14. 
ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ರಾಜಕೀಯ ಪರಂಪರೆ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಎ ಡಾಕ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಇನ್ ಮಾರ್ಚ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಣ್ಯರು ಇನ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಆನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಏಪ್ರಿಲ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಎ ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಡಾಕ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ದಿ ಆಲ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಎ ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ವಿಚಾರ ವೇದಿಕೆ ಟೈಟಲ್ಡ್ ಮೆನ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಮಿನೆನ್ಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಎಂ ಎನ್ ಚೌಡಪ್ಪ ಇಂಟರ್ವ್ಯೂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಸ್ ಶ್ರೀಕಂಠ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಆನ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಜುಲೈ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಅಟ್ ನೈನ್ ಎ ಎಂ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಡಾನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈಸೂರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ದ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಟಾಕ್ ವಾಸ್ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ತರ್ಟಿಯತ್ ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಂಬರ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಅಟ್ ನೈನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಪಿ ಎಂ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಎಸ್ ಅನಂತ ನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಇಂಟರ್ವ್ಯೂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಸ್ ಶ್ರೀಕಂಠ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಸಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ದ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟರ್ವ್ಯೂ ವಾಸ್ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎನ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಫೆಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ರಿಫ್ಟ್ ಶ್ರೀಕಂಠಿಕ ಲೇಟರ್ ದಿ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡೆಡ್ ಇಂಟರ್ವ್ಯೂ ವಾಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ದ ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಆರ್ಕೈವ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಡೆಲ್ಲಿ ಶ್ರೀಕಂಠ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಡ್ ಸೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಪೀಚಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ to various radio stations in Karnataka. They were broadcast from Bangalore and Darwad, All India Radio stations. He has delivered about 20 radio speeches from Akashwani stations. In 